Howdy folks and welcome back to another exciting video with the Chevy Malibu behind me. This is a 72 with a 350 two barrel in it. It runs, kinda. We saw in the last video where we did get it to run for the first time in 32 years, but now I want to put it back on the road and drive it like the car it's intended to and see what we can make happen. Now we've got a lot to do. We need to work for the brakes. We need to make sure that the transmission is even in the car and just check out a lot of other stuff. We've got some upgrades. We've got some modifications. We've got some things to make this a nice car, a drivable car. So stick around to the end of the video and see, can we put this car back on the road for the first time in three decades? Now, if you haven't seen the first video, make sure you check it out because we had a lot of fun trying to get this thing back on the road. We dug it out from where it was sitting and we had to do a little diagnostic work to figure out what exactly was wrong with it. And with a little bit of effort, we got the thing to run. So sit back, relax, enjoy the video, and hang out and see just how much we can get out of this little Chevelle that's been sitting for so long. Now this is where the fun's going to begin. We have everything here to rebuild the brakes and make this car be able to stop. Now that we've figured out how to make it run, the biggest thing that we're going to do and tackle today is convert the front to disc. And on top of that, power disc. So we're going to take the old front drum and spindle off, remove that, Add the one that's in the trunk, resurface the rotors and all that good stuff. We've got calipers here, we've got a new master cylinder, new pads, an oil change with the zinc additive just to make everything go right. We've got our dust caps for the spindles. We have all sorts of bearings, seals, new hardware for the shoes, new shoes themselves, and wheel cylinders, and then all the brake hoses you need to make this complete. So <laughs> this is going to be fun. Let's go ahead and tackle this and see what we can make happen because I am so excited to get this car back on the road. Let's see what we got to work with under here. All right. Mmm, toasty drums. Now the good thing about this car is that all of it is unlocked for the most part. I mean, they do spin freely, so hopefully it won't be too bad actually pull this off and get the drum off. What the heck is that? Oh. There's my Taco Bell fire packet that somehow managed to get into the car. That's a little embarrassing. I'm hoping that this thing is not as bad as I think. He wanted to go with the front disc and I agree. Discs are nice. No, are you gonna? Are you really gonna fight me? Are you really gonna fight me? All right, this is not cool. Let's just get this bearing. Oh, thank you. That was very nice. So kind of you to agree with me. Mhm. Mm Look at there. Now the real question is, why did I just do all that? Because I'm taking the spindle off. <laughs> oh boy, I think I've lost my mind. So this tie rod probably got replaced at some point and they just didn't put a cotter pin, they just used a nail. Hey, sometimes you gotta improvise. Thank you. Nice. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Nice. There it is. I got the spindles off on the drums and we started to disassemble everything and get the rotors sent off so that way we can actually resurface them and reuse them. They look really good and didn't want to have to waste all that so they're getting cleaned up. But when I took the rotors off, I noticed that on the spindle, it's bad. Like, I don't know what has happened here. 
It's supposed to be a nice, smooth machine surface, so that way the inside of the bearing can ride against it. But all of that material has just been destroyed. It's almost like a, a bearing froze or something, and when they pulled it off, it just destroyed the spindle. So that kind of put us a little bit behind, but that's okay. We've ordered new spindles. They're on the way. Uh, apparently, you can modify these to make them work, or the drums at least. I don't want to do that. The owner wanted to just go ahead and get new spindles. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start on the rears, just so that way we can like keep going and moving forward with some progress. So let's tear apart the rear drums and rebuild them. We have our new spindles in. They came in from Summit Racing. These are really nice. And this is basically going to complete the disc brake conversion. Now what I've done already is taken all of the hardware and components from the old spindles and added them to the new one. So we've got our caliper brackets and our dust shield here. So everything should be ready to go to put back on the car. So let's just see how it looks. disc brakes here soon. What we'll need to do is jack up the suspension to get it to where that upper ball joint will go down into the spindle itself and then we can start you know bolting things up getting them torqued down get all of our cotter pins back in place and then we can put our rotors calipers brake hoses all that good stuff on. So these rotors came with the car I went and got them resurfaced and we put new bearings in it in the rear new wheel seals got all the uh, race is done in here inside, so everything is ready to go. Got the spindle nice and greased up. Let's pop this on and see how it looks for the first time. Oh, that's magnificent. Please don't do this to me. We were having such a great time. Everybody was happy. Now for some calipers. Got new pads. We went with the AC Delco, of course. Aha! Nice. Look at that. Woo! We have complete front disc swap ready to go. Back on the ground. Nothing fell off, so I think that's successful. Uh, and we still have to change the master cylinder and get that out of the way. Add the brake booster and then run some kind of hose as a vacuum source for the brake booster. But once we do all that, we're basically done. So the car is back together. Theoretically, I'm very excited about this. This is, whew, that was a lot of work, but it was worth it. I mean, this car is going to have power disc brakes on the front, the drums are rebuilt new gas tank, everything is ready for this car to be a usable vehicle once again.
we've converted the car to front desk, but we aren't done yet. Since the rear is still drum, we need to get rid of the combination valve that is in the car currently because it's proportioned for 50% of the braking force to go to the front and the rear. But we want to switch it over to this. This is a disc drum proportioning valve. Now this is a CPP brand and it's a really good tool. Uh, you just got to do a couple adapter fittings. I think I had to make one change to a brake line, but all the fittings for the most part pretty much lined up. Now, what this does is as you apply the pedal, it's going to apply an even force to the front and rear. The problem is if, let's say, a brake line goes out or something happens where you have a leak and it recognizes that fluid is leaving the system at a faster rate than maybe the front is. What it'll do is it will close off the rear system and leave the front system functioning so that way you can make a safe stop when you need it to. So in order for this to be bled though, we have to use this tool here. Now what this does, it will keep this valve centered because there's actual a little dip in the middle of this valve that will trigger the brake light switch. So if it moves one way or the other, that switch is triggered and it will actually turn the light on in the dash. So I removed that, stuck this tool in there so that way we know it stays center because if we start bleeding things and making things go to like working and moving fluid at a rapid rate, it's gonna shut it off to that end, whatever end you're bleeding at that point. So we're gonna pop this in and start our bleeding process and hopefully that should be the last little ticket item besides filling it with coolant to go for a drive. I'm gonna crack the master cylinder lines here and just wait for a little bit of fluid to drip out. What I'll do is I'll have Tony sit in the uh, driver's seat and just slowly work the pedal until I see some dribble out. That way I know that the master cylinder is actually bled. I'm a professional, can't you tell? Go ahead and work the pedal very slowly because it'll shoot back fluid if we're not careful. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, we got fluid up here. That one's good. Hold on one sec. Just hold what you got. Oops. Okay, now I might have to crack open the rear a little bit more. Let me try that. All right, go ahead, just real slow. We're getting a little bit, getting some air. Come on now, Betsy, I believe in you. There we go, all right, now hold her down. All right, the master cylinder is a go. All right, Tony, give me uh, three pumps of the pedal and hold it on the end. Good? Good. Got a little fluid. Do it again. Oh, we got a lot of fluid that time. That was a good sign. All right, one more time. All right, hold the pedal down. It's still not working. Now, pump it up and then hold it again. It's not stopping it. Like, it just won't do it.
think she's a little angry. Yeah, she's um, she having some internal issues. Well, there's no park at all. Let me just. This shifter's bad. Is that neutral? No. Is that neutral? No. So you saw me messing with the proportioning valve at the end of that last clip, and the biggest issue we were having was that the rear brakes would not work at all. They would get fluid back there, but nothing would happen. We could pump the pedal up, bleed all the air out, nothing. So what I decided to do just as a test was uh, you know, do a couple things. We actually placed the proportioning valve. We had the little tool in there that centers up the proportioning valve, and nothing would work. And I got to thinking about it, and I actually called CPP, and they verified that but the pedal engagement with that original brake booster was the biggest issue because that was the only thing I did not replace that was still original equipment. So when that brake booster was on, you'd mash the pedal and it wouldn't engage the pedal enough. So the master cylinder was only engaging the front, wouldn't touch the rear, so whenever you'd mash the pedal, it was like, you know, line lock. And the car would not stop at all. But what I did, I took the brake booster off and replaced it and just set the master cylinder on and bolted it to the firewall. And now the rears work. Now obviously we do need to get a proper master cylinder. This is just rigged up so we can test it and see if the guy wants to actually add a new brake booster to it, run only manual, so we'll see. But it actually runs and it actually moves and stops safely. That's a big, big step in the right direction. So I'm happy to see that this car is almost road legal, almost road safe and ready to go. Got a few more things to work out. I've got some tuning issues that I want to kind of sort out and get going and get the car, you know, adjust the brakes a little bit better. But we're almost there. We are almost there. Now the owner dropped off some nice tires. These are 235-6015 BF Goodrich Radio TAs. Some nice white letters. We'll clean the blue off, make them look a little bit nicer. But this is going to be the last piece of the puzzle to get this car back on the road and drivable. It's too hot. In between this clip and that last clip, we were trying to pull the car back in because we could tell that the storm was coming. But the transmission decided, hey, I don't feel that mood anymore, especially with this small little grade we have here. So we're going to add a little bit of trans fluid. Oh, miss everything in the funnel. And then we're going to go for a drive. That should be enough, right? I measured that to the ounce.
of the Chevelle since 1990. When we did the math, it came out to be 32 years exactly. That's a long time. And I'm about to put it back on the road. Maybe not so quickly as I thought. As I was saying, I'm about to put this thing back on the road for the first time in 32 years. are working great the discs are doing what they're supposed to do i mean i don't know if i showed a whole lot of it but we fought those brakes trying to get this thing to run and be workable i mean it was a battle trying to make it work and we finally got them to where they did work and i think i'm running out of gas let's go back home oh wait we're good i sloshed it all to one side but it turned out to be that brake booster and as soon as we got that figured out the brakes just started working perfectly and this thing shifts it drives and runs i mean i don't know it's hard to just you don't really get this a lot and i'm just really excited to see a chevelle back on the road for the first time in 32 years these chevelles are awesome man i mean they're just they're so cool i love it i absolutely love it Shake down 
runs. I love it. I love it so much. Oh man, it doesn't get old. I swear. I mean, Chevelle, like, this is one of the ultimate muscle cars of the era. Even though this is just a plain J352 barrel, it still has the look, it has the feel, it has everything about it that makes it an awesome car from the era. A little warm. Let's go check out what happened. Uh -oh. Well, that's not good. Let her calm down a minute. Uh -oh. Sorry, Chanel. <laughs> My guess is probably it, it finally circulated enough fluid and coolant, and then uh, it sucked it all in the engine. It's just sitting there, it's not really moving a whole lot, and uh, probably ran a little low. The good thing is, we were sitting, we were off the road at least when that happened. So. We'll just let that calm down for a minute. It's okay. Listen, listen, it's okay. She's a little upset, but it's okay. Listen, it's fine. No need to be crying. Yeah, she's a little empty. <laughs> I think empty might have been an understatement. Yeah, we're still not full. I'll be back. I did add a good majority of this and some water, but uh, apparently whenever it was full and the thermostat opened, it wasn't full. So, we'll try that again. Well, um... I think I noticed why our coolant was puking out and uh, our generator light came on which is for the alternator which means it's not charging and it just so happens when I looked in under the hood there's no alternator belt which means there's no fan belt so somewhere down the road we lost the belt and that's why she started running hot and stopped charging I don't feel as bad now <laughs> maybe it wasn't my fault completely Maybe only like 85% my fault. Well, there she is. Here's our culprit. Right in the driveway. So from here to there, it got hot. Well, I guess we need to go get a new one. All right, let's get that power steering pump built too. I uh, bought both belts just to go ahead and do it so that way he would have to worry about changing a belt later on and having the exact same thing happen. So we'll just change both of them and call it a day. She was on her way out. Look at that. I could break this belt. That would have been bad. 
We don't need something like that on our nice car. As you just saw, it was pretty tough driving this car as it is. Now, I like simple, I like effective, and I like modifications that work. And that's what I have here. Now, this is a performance distributor, Davis Unified Ignition HEI Conversion Setup. Now, it's all one wire. It's built specifically for this car, and it's awesome. They heard about the Chevelle. They reached out, and they wanted to provide something to make this car much easier to get back on the road and be enjoyable and usable once again. So not only did they send this distributor, they sent a kit for their live wire spark plug wires. These things are amazing. You know I've used them in the past and I stand by their product, especially because they're based in Tennessee, it's a good product. Now what's great about it is that this thing is built, like I said, specifically for this car. I sent them the specifications for everything about the car and you know any kind of future modifications that may come along. And we can still kind of, you know, adjust this if needed, but out of the box, it's basically ready to go. Now what's neat about it, it does have a serial number engraved into the bottom, as well as the total timing. So you have your initial timing that you set, and then they advance this with their springs and their weights for 24 degrees, all in at 3,000 RPM. So it's a fairly standard and basic car, but it's a heavy car, so they curve this specifically to make it fit and work in the Chevelle. So we're gonna drop this in, and I wanna see how much better this thing can run, because these distributors are top notch. So let's pop the hood and get it going. Now it's time for these hefty live wire spark plug wires. And don't even think about forgetting your dielectric grease. That ought to do it. Everything's wired up. We got a 12 volt source. We've got our firing order, I think, in the right direction. And we've got uh, the distributor pretty much set exactly where it was when I pulled the old one out. Let's see if it'll fire up. sounds instantly rev happy snappy right off acceleration let's go drive it
somebody has an exhaust system or something, some mufflers and running out the back, make it sound pretty good. That would help a lot, a whole lot. Right now my poor neighbors are like, what the heck is this guy doing driving around with open manifolds just do a Wi-Fi, but that's all she's got. this a lot and it honestly every time I do it something like this happens where it just fires up and goes it amazes me again because you just don't have that happen if you really don't it's very rare something runs this good right out the gate maybe that's the GM in it I don't know probably so I can see that Chevelle back on the road for the first time in 32 years and honestly surprisingly well for what it is I'm very happy with how this car ran and I want this to kind of be a testament for what you guys can do at home you can have fun enjoy the car drive it do something with it don't let it just sit get it back on the road fix it while you can fix it while you're using it put it back on the road and use it for what it's intended to and that's to be a vehicle now the, the owner of this car is going to take it and he wants to finish fixing it up he wants to you know do some modifications maybe a four barrel uh, he wants to fix the rust paint it he's got all sorts of sheet metal uh, interior parts to make this car what he wants it to be but the good news is he can use it he can do things with it basically what I'm doing is just getting the ball rolling and you know I'm pulling the trigger at the start line for him to finish the race and get this car back driving he's already got a ton of plans for it and you know maybe a little later down the road as he gets some work done we'll revisit and see what he's got done to it so uh, this car is awesome. I love it. It's going to be sad to see it go, but I'm happy to see it back on the road, and that's the main thing. So, guys, if you like the video, if you really want to see more stuff like this, leave a like down below because it lets me know that you guys are enjoying the content and that you want to see more of it. Subscribe. It helps out the channel. And if you really want to go and directly support stuff like this, order a T-shirt, order a sticker, because all that money that we get on that website that is linked down below goes directly back into stuff like this and making cars go back on the road. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll see you in the next one.